Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we've got NWSL 2022 team-by-team previews for all of our listeners. We're going to be doing all 12 teams plus a full season preview uh, for the upcoming 2022 NWSL season. But first, we are going to Get into detail about New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC. A quick reminder to follow us on Twitter for all breaking news at Attacking Third. If you're listening to this as a podcast, you can go ahead and give us a five-star rating and review. It takes just a second and it really helps us out. So if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify right now, you can hit the five-star rating review right on the Attacking Third page. Go ahead and help us out and give us five stars. We're here. We're in full preseason mode. Lisa, how are you doing today? I'm so pumped because it feels like we just wrapped up like the 2021 NWSL championship, the two drafts, expansion draft and the NWSL 2022 draft. And now we're here like preseason is fully underway for these clubs. Uh, There's a CBA, lest we not forget. And now we get to preview each team, which I am so excited to deep dive into each club in the NWSL, talk about all the nitty gritty, everything that happened in the offseason because there was so much movement this offseason. But it's here, like 2022 season is fully underway and we are already previewing it before we know it challenge cup will be starting we'll have the regular season going underway this is our first full nwsl season as a podcast sandra because we launched in july right at the start of the olympics which was fantastic but in the middle of the nwsl season so now we get to give our predictions for each club up front before any scrimmages any uh preseason games or anything like that and test our knowledge at the end of the year we get to go back into our prediction mode which I love to do with you yeah I'm hyped about it I you know getting ready for all of this you know and all of our content planning and the stuff that we do behind the scenes right off mic I'm like gosh like we're we're here dude like it's finally happening and I had the same feeling because it's like Last season was such, it was like the longest year ever, right? We keep talking yeah. about it. it was the longest year ever in NWSL uh, season history. Uh, that even with us launching kind of mid season in the summer, really, uh, of the season adjacent to the Olympics starting, uh, we still felt like we had like a whole season under a belt because of how long it, it went. But the reality is, we did it. And now here we are. We get to be at the beginning and we get to witness the beginning, be a part of that beginning, and, uh, you know, get to see how things play out into the middle and then eventually an end but we are definitely still in the early phases we're still in preseason mode let's let's take the deep dive i mean i'm so excited that we're tackling and being so ambitious and doing all of the clubs we're going to do a a team preview for everybody and i love that we're starting with new jersey new york gotham fc it's gonna we're gonna get a chance to take a look at some things and uh, go over some 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 areas and some maybe ask some questions present some questions right mm-hmm. and uh, see if maybe revisit them down the line and see if we get an answer to them but uh, let's maybe do just a quick team overview for Gotham FC this is going to be their second season playing as Gotham FC formerly Sky Blue FC right official like they had the the, the rebrand and launched all of the cool stuff last year so this is officially year two as Gotham FC. Uh, their head coach, Scott Parkinson, actually took over late season, not so much midseason, but September of 2021, became Gotham FC's head coach uh, after uh, former head coach Freya Coom ultimately departed for Angel City FC. And uh, Parkinson was formerly an assistant at Chicago Red Stars and then now is taking over officially with a full season for Gotham FC in 2022 alongside assistant coaches, Becky Tweet and assistant coach Beverly Yanez. But they also had some notable hires in the front office, Lisa. It wasn't it wasn't just on the coaching side of things. They've also been stacking up that uh, the, that the administrative level as well. Yes, we saw this with a lot of clubs um, actually re-establishing their front office with the new coaches that come in, just trying to get a, a new vibe. And Gotham did that extremely quickly. And they were probably one of the first clubs to do it throughout the 2021 season. Um, and they are looking like a female-led front office. They have... Uh, 
Yale Averbush West, who was the interim GM. Now she is full GM. Her assistant GM is Stephanie Lee. And the newly hired chief business officer is Andrea Pagnanelli. Uh, so that's three power women in the front office there uh, for Gotham. In 2021, New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC, they finished the regular season fifth overall entering the postseason. Um, and they really only entered the postseason because the NWSL expanded their playoff format in 2021 instead of the top four teams making playoffs. It was the top six teams. So Gotham sitting in that fifth spot place, they made it into the postseason. They actually made it all the way to the quarterfinals. Uh, at that point, they lost to Chicago Red Stars in Chicago. It was 1-0 that game. Um, and Chicago went on to go to the championship, um, the, the final against Washington Spirit. So Gotham, they had a playoff push in 2021, and they had a bit of a playoff run. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was something to, to hang their hats on for sure. But we're going to dive into more of what that could mean for them in 2022 because we were already excited and looking ahead to this year back at the end of 2021 because we did an attacking third way too early power rankings episode and that was back in early December where we decided like hey let's give some some really early predictions here let's even be ambitious with it a little bit for 2022 and we had Gotham FC amongst all of the teams and we included San Diego and Angel City amongst all of those teams for the power rankings as well and we said you know what we think that Gotham could improve a little bit and go from maybe a fifth place finish to a fourth place finish and we're going to talk a little bit about maybe why we think that can come to fruition and maybe why we think that might not come to fruition there's a lot to get in through here but maybe let's uh also start we're talking about additions to this team right whether it was on the coaching side and whether it was on the front office side and the off season this year is really, I think, where the franchise got the opportunity to sort of show how they can add on the player side of things because they absolutely had some breakout roster signings during this offseason. I think probably one of the biggest ones, obviously, was uh, the trade with Orlando Pride where they acquired goalkeeper Ashton Harris and defender Ali Krieger from Orlando Pride and those might be the two biggest right with their their longevity in this league their ties to the United States women's national team but it wasn't just those two signings right Lisa it was not Gotham I think with the the change in the head coach it often lends to some different player signings to to kind of form around Scott Parkinson's coaching ideals that he wants for Gotham in 2022 um they also signed Michelle Betos, formerly with Racing Louisville goalkeeper. She uh, stepped away from Racing Louisville and became a bit of a free agent on her own before that was possible. Gotham picked her up. So they had Ashlyn Harris and then, then Michelle Betos as goalkeeper stepping in. They also drafted um, in the NWSL draft the 34th pick overall. Clemson's Hensley Handcuff, a goalkeeper that will come in. She is a non-roster invite on, on the roster right now for preseason. Um, they also also were able to sign to a two-year deal from BYU, Cameron Tucker, a forward. She was in the 2021 draft and elected to go back to BYU and play her fifth year there, ultimately taking BYU to the NCAA College Cup final. Um, uh, they lost that final, but it was the first time BYU made it that far in the NCAA tournament. And then a, a big, I think the biggest roster signing that Gotham had in this offseason was a trade that happened through multi-step from Houston to San Diego and then ultimately ending at Gotham FC is midfielder Christy Mewis. She is in Jersey. She's made it to preseason. Um, this, for me, is the biggest roster roster signing for Gotham FC in the offseason. Uh, there's a lot of arguments for the Ashlyn Harris, Ali Krieger trade from Orlando to Gotham, but for me, it's Christy Mewis adding a midfielder in Mewis to Gotham's midfield is really beneficial for Gotham as they move forward and for Scott Parkinson as he looks to kind of shape his team around Christy Mewis. She's a 30-year-old. She was with Houston Dash for five seasons from 2017 to 2021. She's also recently worked her way 
back into the United States women's national team roster, right? Like she was a namestay for the United States from 2013 to 2014. Then it took a five year gap in that span of years. She had an ACL tear, suffered some injuries, but 2019, she was called back into national team training. And most recently, Mewis has made the She Believes Cup roster for 2022. Uh, she's a really good, creative playmaker in the midfield that Gotham is really lucky to have signed in this offseason. Yeah, I'm in agreement with you. I think that I, we were witness to probably one of the most active uh, transfer windows ever, I think, in NWSL history. And this is just before the historic CBA got ratified. And now there's in the future is going to be the concept of free a free agency market that comes into play. But uh, even within just this off season, uh, all of the rumors that ended ended up coming to fruition, right? Uh, I believe the the Harris and Krieger move was rumored for a little while before it actually even became official. But this move with Christy Mewis, it just sort of had to happen in steps, right? From from Houston to San Diego and then to to Gotham, and it's just it's I, I feel for a player like Christy Mewis, it's not something that's unfamiliar for her. It's it's when you're looking at her tenure over the course of the NWSL specifically kind of going from team to team at time, but uh, really being able to eventually get into whatever market she's in and then immediately making an impact. I mean, I think that says a lot about a player. This is a player who at one point went from Boston to the Washington spirit and then to the Chicago red stars for literally a week. And even within her one debut, made like made an impact and scored a goal in her one game before going to Houston. So I would imagine that getting this caliber of a player for a spot like Gotham where they've already signed her right to, to a contract and say, Hey, we want you here, you know, build with us as they enter their second official year as Gotham, right. That it's going to be a great pickup for them to, to sort of build with, I don't know so much around, you know, but definitely built up with this type of player uh, in, in the midfield, you know, or possibly uh, high up, you know, we'll yes. see what, what Parkinson has planned. Yes. And when you look at the midfielders that Gotham already has in Ali Long, McCall Zerboni, Jennifer Cujo, um, if you throw Christy Mewis as a midfielder into that mix, she does give a different look. She's a different type of player than maybe someone like Ali Long or McCall Zerboni, who, who plays a little bit higher up the field. For Christy Mewis, she has really good vision and, and creative footwork. And then imagine if Yoma Anamano and, and Margaret Purse up top in front of Christy Mewis and the balls that she'll be able to split through for them, the corner kicks that Mewis will be able to deliver for Gotham. There's a lot of different levels to Mewis's game. And although she is 30 years old, I think she's at a point in her career where she is looking to be the best she can be right now. And that means getting a little bit better. We saw the growth from Mewis over the last two years, being called into the national team, uh, getting a lot of different looks in Houston, three goals, four assists throughout the 2021 season, and then going over to the Olympics in Tokyo. This is a player that will help grow with Gotham, and I think that she'll even develop a few more skills. You know, I, I think when it comes to breakout roster signings, I mean, if we get a lot of these types of headlines around these player acquisitions because of big losses that a club goes through. So in terms of what we can consider some of the biggest losses, perhaps if you're a fan, you're looking at, oh, this is so detrimental to our club, maybe even. Uh, in terms of some of the biggest losses for this club, we're talking about uh, just general offseason losses, retirings that, you know, retirements that happens. Uh, obviously, when it comes to this club, we had to take a look at the midseason coaching loss. Uh, but somebody like Carly Lloyd, you know, who ended up retiring, hanging up her cleats. But not only that, positionally, I think we have to take a look at, there was some some moments there, right, where, where everyone was wondering, well, what is the goalkeeper position going to be looking like for Gotham FC? Because before the official announcement of the trade with between Orlando and Gotham, uh, Kaylin Sheridan was traded to San Diego Way FC, and goalkeeper Didi Heritage was traded to Angel City FC. And these were two goalkeepers that I think a lot of people knew in light of a double-team expansion draft 
were looking like some top prospects in terms of the talent that was going to be available possibly in an expansion draft, but uh, they got ahead of the game here, right? Started having conversations Mm -hmm. with these two expansion sides, having conversations with these two players respectively and ended up making sort of a mutually beneficial trade for all the parties involved in terms of the two franchises and the two players. Uh, And then obviously uh, that opened the window for for Harris uh, to come through, for Betos to come through, had some more experience uh, on the goalkeeper side of things, which was big because like you mentioned, Lisa, they didn't lose, not only just lose their their number one starter and then their, uh, their backup, also starting caliber uh, goalkeeper, but they lost goalkeeper Megan Hines, Mandy McGlynn signing over in Sweden. Uh, So there was a little bit of, it was just all chaos, right? During that window, people weren't too sure what things were going to look like. But outside of just the goalkeeper position, they also traded what a lot of us, I think, consider as a top prospect, right? In terms of uh, young talent across the league. Midfielder Brianna Pinto was uh, involved in a trade to North Carolina Courage. So alongside the retirement of somebody like a Carly Lloyd, uh, the goalkeeper position looking a little bit different for this club, uh, there was also what's considered maybe a young uh, prospect uh, heading on over to a new franchise as well. If you're looking at some of these losses, Lisa, is there anyone in particular that maybe stands out to you the most? The goalkeeper position overall, but um, namely Didi Heracic, honestly, for me, because when you look at trades that are happening, um, a lot of the new clubs, the two new expansion sides, San Diego and Angel City, they need a starting goalkeeper that can step in immediately, lead a team, uh, be a veteran, especially in goal. You want someone that has a lot of experience. And goalkeeper Kaylin Sheridan, Canadian international, she won gold at the Olympics this summer. Uh, she won 2021 NWSL Best 11 uh, Goalkeeper of the Year nominee. She has a lot of accolades and so much experience. So it makes sense that that was a tradable factor for Gotham. However, Didi Heracic was technically their backup goalkeeper for Gotham throughout 2021. She stepped in, played eight games during that Olympic stretch, had two clean sheets, 22 saves. She did a really good job, a seamless transition from Sheridan to Heracic in goal during that stretch. So that was surprising to me that Gotham would essentially do a clean sweep of their goalkeeper unit and now bringing in Harris and Michelle Betos that yes, that does add some more veteran experience for them. But those two losses of sh- goalkeeper Sheridan and Heracic were huge for Gotham. The, the goalkeeper position is one that has to have a lot of trust with their defensive unit and the overall shape of the team, have a lot of communication with how the formation looks um, as soon as they lose the ball so they can pinch centrally and be that defensive voice from the back of the goal. And to have a new goalkeeper in every single level from starting to the fourth string goalkeeper be brand new at a club, that could provide some issues for Gotham going into 2022. Yeah, I don't think it's unfair to to look at or, or kind of uh, highlight that heading into the season coming up. Uh, but even with all of the losses, right, and the additions, the acquisitions throughout the offseason, we're starting to get preseason rosters. And I love these when they launch because they can, we could see some of these preseason rosters have somewhere around like 25 names. But I love it when they come and they have like 30 to 35 names on them. Obviously, uh, these rosters – end up getting whittled down a little bit as the season looms closer. Obviously it'll probably have some cuts, you know, take place maybe around March and then obviously ahead of the regular season as well. But let's take a look at what this preseason roster looks like right now. As of our recording, we've got uh, three goalkeepers for Gotham FC. It's Michelle Betos, Ashton Harris as Hen- Hensley handcuff for defenders. Amani Dorsey, Caprice Didasco, Elizabeth Eddy, Sabrina Flores, Mandy Freeman, Ellie Jean, uh, Estelle Johnson, Ellie Krieger, Gina Lewandowski, Julia Grosso, Kellyanne Livingstone and Amanda Visco for the midfielders, Nicole Baxter, Jennifer Cujo, Naho Kawasumi, Ali Long, Christy Mewis, Dami Richardson, Delaney Sheehan, Taryn Torres, McCall Zerboni, Tess Bode. And for the forward core, you have Paige Monahan, Ifioma Anamanu, Margaret Purse, Cameron Tucker, and Jenna Bike. I uh, gotta say, I mean, we got about 30 or so names on this preseason roster that's a lot of people 
to compete for different positions. Uh, let's take a look, maybe and break things down in terms of what we're looking for when it comes to perhaps an ideal starting 11, right? Just this is a lot to go through and look mm -hmm. and there's even names on here that maybe we just don't have enough information on the pitch, right? To sort of uh, say who is going to crack that starting 11. So when I'm looking at this list, I could see already a handful uh, of players that I think are possibly locks, right? When it comes day one for kickoff, when that opening whistle hits, who am I going to see in the starting 11? If everything goes great in preseason, everyone's happy and healthy. I'm looking at somebody like a Margaret Purse to absolutely be involved in that attack. We saw what this player brought and meant to this team during that 2021 season, how they played with her, what they looked like, and how they struggled a little bit without her and that long stretch of period for injury. Uh, but I'm also really eager to see what that defensive line mm -hmm. looks like in terms of a starting 11, because this was a defense that was really heralded throughout the 2021 season. A lot of us were keeping an eye on it. We're like, hey, there's a very special defense that's happening, uh, you know, in terms of this back line and the goalkeeping unit for Gotham FC. But uh, it, it's it's been shaken up a little bit ahead of the 2022 season. New names and some names from last year. How is it going to look for 2022? In terms of an ideal starting 11, do you have one in place already, Lisa? Or are there just some names that are sticking out for you right now? Yes. I mean, when – when you mentioned like the locks already, you have to look at someone like Caprice Didasco, right? But defender of the year in 2021, a really good standout player that had not only consistency throughout every single game in 2021, but, but Didasco also got better, challenged herself. And we saw new skills from Didasco towards the end of the season. Uh, so I think she's a lock in the back line. I think Estelle Johnson really made her way into the back line as being part of that brick wall for them. Uh, we touched on the goalkeepers earlier and being that biggest lost position. I think that, and I hope that there's a battle for starting go goalkeeper between Michelle Betos and Ashlyn Harris. And to have that friendly competition to drive each one and push them a little bit harder. So goalkeeper is a bit of a question mark for me. If it ends up being Ashlyn Harris, I won't be surprised, but I'm keeping that a question mark. And then uh, when you look in the midfield, I would love to see Gotham do four in the midfield if they could give us a diamond it, it why not with christy mewis ali long mccall zerboni and kawasumi naho kawasumi i think that that could provide a lot of flexibility and fun in the midfield that would cause a lot of trouble for opponents but this starting lineup, you're, it's so hard because we're just at the very, very start of preseason. We don't know what's going to happen. I think injuries often play a, a role in how players and personnel get shaped, especially throughout preseason. Because if you can make your mark in preseason and then br really crack that code to be in the starting 11 and prove yourself, you're looking pretty good. You're sitting pretty for the rest of the season. So it comes down to the first few games of the Challenge Cup and what we'll see. But a few locks for sure. Margaret Purse in the front line, Caprice Didasco and Estelle Johnson for me in the back line. And I think Allie Long in the midfield are, if we're going positionally, those are my yeah. top locks for Gotham. Yeah, I don't think you're too far off. In terms of, again, large preseason roster that we're looking at, as far as the names on this uh, preseason roster in terms of a young prospect, right? In terms of young talent that Gotham FC fans can look at and sort of maybe keep an eye on and say, I'm going to see what's going on with this player, track their development, see if they're going to make an impact. And then whether it's in this uh, first year or a couple seasons down the line where they have a breakthrough, I think we're both looking at the same player here. We're looking at Cameron Tucker out of BYU as our young prospect to keep an eye on for Gotham FC. I am. I'm looking at forward Cameron Tucker out of BYU. She signed a two-year deal with Gotham. Uh, she spent five seasons at BYU. She entered the 2021 NWSL draft uh, and got drafted, but chose to go back and play that extra season in college, which really helped her. That fifth season, she took BYU to the College Cup for the very first time in the school's history. She had 43 goals in her career, for tied for sixth most all time, 29 assists, tied for eighth most of all time. Um, it, just really a, a good player overall. And because she had a lot of experience, five years at the college level, 
and now sliding into the professional game alongside forwards up top for Gotham in Margaret Purse, if you Amano, even Kawasumi that can help really mold her and to be a different attacking forward player. Paige Monahan can show her how it's done. Evelyn Vian. There's just a lot of smart soccer players in the forward group for Gotham. So if Cameron Tucker can lean into that, um, really try to grow and just be a sponge. This is a player that not only I think we could see get time with Gotham in 2022, but hopefully have a bit of a breakout game or two to prove herself and show that it was a good signing for Gotham to uh, agree to a two year contract for Tucker. I hear that. Moving on from our young prospects, uh, we're taking a look at a player that we want to see take the next step. So in terms of our next step player, when we're taking a look at this preseason roster, we're keeping an eye on another forward in Paige Monahan. This is a, a player that's been with this franchise since uh, 2019, uh, drafted when they were still considered Sky Blue FC, right? A New Jersey native. There was a bit of a connection there. And uh, again, I think this is maybe a player if we were, if, if attacking third was in existence in 2019, that maybe this was a player that we would have had pegged for, you know, a young prospect to sort of keep an eye on. But uh, here we are now entering the 2022 season and for a player like Monaghan when you're looking at players sort of entering right that third year that fourth year into the NWSL we're looking at these players uh, and sort of gauging that development where are they at is was their ceiling just what it is going to continue to be or is there another level to these players and their games and we've seen out of Paige Monaghan for this franchise the impact that she can have when she's able to sort of get in there build over the course of a game right and we got to see this sort of limited minutes uh, throughout 2021. Again, another player that uh, Gotham had to sort of deal with uh, on the sidelines due to injury. So getting her back alongside Margaret Purse down the stretch, right, of that late playoff push that they were making. I think, again, this was another player where we saw Gotham looks a little bit different, maybe a little bit better when she's available and active on the pitch for them. So I would really love to see uh, this player uh, take that that next step. I would really love to see what she looks like in, in kind of a, another full season, right? Mm -hmm. Alongside uh, another a new acquisition with somebody like uh, Christy Mewis, right? It's going to maybe look different, maybe look better. Well, we will see. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. Uh, in terms of uh, more players to keep an eye on, we are also going to be looking for uh, the essential experience Experienced player, a player that we think who is just that their experience is essential to uh, th this club. This is a segment that we're going to be keeping in line with all of our previews. And in terms of this preseason roster for Gotham FC, we're looking at that midfield core and maybe there's some champagne problems there, right? In terms of having the amount of midfielders that they have. But when we're looking for experience, I think we're in agreement that we're going to be looking at somebody like Ali Long to continue building with this team uh, as she did when she was uh, first introduced to the club uh, last season. To see the growth that midfielder Ali Long took in 2021 with Gotham as she signed with them. She came home the, the Long Island native back to New Jersey, New York. She was able to take the, the midfield and make it a scary midfield to play against as a defensive player in, in Ali Long. She has such great vision. She has a great spray of the ball. She can get her head up, split lines, find her, her forwards up top. And as the season went on in 2021, she became more comfortable playing with the teammates around her. And when Ali Long becomes more comfortable and more confident on the ball, she becomes way more of a threat. And we saw Long develop throughout 2021 with Gotham. And this season, can Long continue to do that, continue to grow, take some of the younger players under her wing, but really be that big defensive block in midfield that scares opponents and, and makes it really difficult for opponents to break down Gotham's defense because she was the starting point of Gotham's defense in 2021, Allie Long, and then having the back four behind her. But really, the way Gotham plays, their outside backs get so far up the pitch that it becomes just two center backs and Allie Long sitting in front as the defensive three triangle uh, as Gotham's last line of defense before the goalkeeper.
We'll see. We'll keep an eye on it for sure. I think looking at this preseason roster, we wanted to allow the opportunity for an international spotlight as well. And we're going to be taking a look at Nahomi Kawasumi, the Japanese international. This was a player I thought who came in really clutch for this team down the stretch in 2021. Again, as they started to sort of get hit with a little bit of an injury bug, they started uh, uh, missing out on uh, attacking players like Paige Monahan, right? Margaret Perth, we talked about this. And Noah Kawasumi was someone who was able to slot in and still try uh, to, to be a player who could generate attack, right? Spearhead an attack and sort of be this uh, extra offensive minded player on the pitch for this team. And as we saw the return, right, of a Margaret Perth, you know, eventually of somebody like a Paige Monahan kind of coming off of the bench. Kawasumi was someone who was just such a collaborative player that it kind of almost didn't matter who we saw kind of slotting in and sliding out, that this was a player who was able to collaborate uh, with the uh, the pieces around her, no matter who they were, right? So uh, I'm excited to still see her in this preseason mix. I'm hopeful that uh, she'll still have an integral part uh, of their roster moving forward. But I think there's still a big burning question, right, for this team uh, as we enter the 2022 season. And the big burning question is, can Gotham deliver when it matters? This uh, We're looking back a little bit at Gotham and their 2021 season overall. They ended up breaking through to the playoffs. And Lisa, as you mentioned at the top of this episode, they made the playoffs for the first time since 2013 because the NWSL also expanded their NWSL playoff format. So this was the first year in 2021 where it was qualified for six teams, right? To to be able to say that they were playoff bound versus in prior years when it was just the top four teams. So closing out their 2021 season, they played a, a first ever quarterfinal fixture in NWSL, but it almost felt like it took forever to find out whether or not they were for certain going to be mm -hmm. a playoff team. There were several moments down the stretch of the regular season where they had, they were presented with the opportunity to just go ahead and clinch. And it took to the very last moments, the last week of the regular season to find out whether or not they were going to actually be playoff bound. And they almost didn't actually have a mm -hmm. say in it. They actually needed some other moving pieces to, to help make that happen for them. So can they deliver when it matters, Lisa? I, that's the most frustrating part of Gotham at the end of 2021. They could have clinched a playoff position <laughs> way earlier than they did. And ultimately, it came down to the results of other teams to push them into the postseason. So for Gotham, can they take more control of their destiny, especially towards the end of the season? It, it's a long season. Uh, a lot of coaches speak in, in phases, there's different chapters of the regular season and it's getting through each chapter and each chapter has a different goal. But for Gotham, I'm specifically looking at that last phase of the season right before the playoffs when this is an opportunity to either keep your high seated spot in the standings or climb up the standings ranking towards the postseason to secure a top six spot. So for Gotham, the burning question is they need to be clutch. They need to deliver. They need to take the fate of their playoff destiny into their own hands and secure it. I hope they can do that, but we haven't seen it yet. So that is really the burning question that we are hoping to find out from Gotham this year from Scott Parkinson, if he can really tie the bow on a season as early as possible and, and be a playoff team that makes a big difference in 2022, because that's what we need to see from Gotham. And they have the pieces, right? They have all the players and they have the momentum. They have the knowledge. They have the individual parts, but can they put it all together and, and deliver towards the end of the year? I'm looking forward to seeing it. I know this is a team that we were very excited about with their launch of their rebrand last year, and we're still keeping that excitement around this team going into 2022, looking to see if they can build off of that breakthrough into the playoffs that they had in 2021. In terms of our way too early uh, power rankings, we had them still in the top four position. In terms of their projected finish, in 2022, we're talking number one all the way through number 12 because there are 12 teams now into the 2022 season. Uh, where do you think they're going to uh, sit uh, towards the end of 2022, Lisa? 
I think Gotham in 2022 will be a playoff team. I think they will make the playoffs, not a high seed. They won't get a first round buy in a one or two spot, but they will make the playoffs um, for the second year in a row with Scott Parkinson that they have with a lot of the Olympic players um, on their team and U.S. call-ups and Christy Mewis and Margaret Purse. I think Margaret Purse will develop a lot this year, gain a lot of confidence, score a lot of fun goals alongside Ifioma Anamato. So I'm, I'm double Gotham as a playoff team. I think we gave them fourth place in December. I think that's a pretty good spot. It's out of that five, six range where it's like the extra playoff position and, and they could be seated fourth. So yeah, I'll, I'll stick them with fourth. Sandra, what about you? Does Gotham make the playoffs? Where do they land? I'm with you. I, I I think we were spot on in December. I don't think that that has changed now in February. I do think that Gotham still has enough there to be considered a playoff team. I do think that, you know, you should set short term goals for yourself, right? So maybe the things that they missed out on last year, I would love to see come to fruition for them in 2022. They narrowly missed out on gaining a higher seed and the opportunity to perhaps host a home playoff game. I would love to see Red Bull Arena and Gotham FC and their fantastic supporters group be mm -hmm. able to put on and host that type of event in some caliber. So I do think they are a playoff team. I'm not too sure if they're going to be one, two or three, but I definitely think that fourth uh, is, is, a, is a bump up from next year or from last year, excuse me, and would be an improvement. So we will see everybody stay tuned uh, for more uh, from us in terms of team by team previews. We want to thank you all as always for listening to our New Jersey, New York Gotham FC 2022 preview full team by team previews for all 12 teams in the NWL are coming up. So stay tuned. You can